Hi guys, sorry about the delay for this review, it's just been such a tiring time trying to record and upload this review, but I finally done it, I finally uploaded my review on Thin Ice, hope you guys can forgive me, but I can tell you, this review is going to be a brilliant review, just like this episode was, so let me tell you what I thought about Thin Ice, it's going to be a good review, I hope you enjoy, and let's do this. Hey guys, what's up? I'm back with another video and in today's video we're going to do the review for Thin Ice. Now I must say that Thin Ice was an extremely brilliant episode. I really, really loved this episode. I really adored the writing from Sarah Dollard. I thought the writing was absolutely spot on from Sarah Dollard. From the successful Face the Raven, I was hoping for a brilliant episode and I certainly got one. I really enjoyed this episode. I actually quite think that Thin Ice is actually better than the pilot and Smile as well because it has a bit more in-depth dialogue, it had a bit more strength to its plots and I thought the characters and the sets and the writing and the direction was so on point in this episode. I thought that this episode was going to be a really great episode, a very much darker episode and I really got that sense of darkness and nostalgic feel from the Doctor and Pearl Mackey's relationship and they had a clash within their relationship in this episode which we really needed to have a really good look at because in the two previous episodes we've not really had Pearl and the Peter Capaldi having a fight over each other. They've merely been complimenting each other in some way that Bill really admires the Doctor for his time machine and the places that he takes her but they've not really concentrated much on their fighting and their on who the Doctor really is and this is the point where Bill actually sees a death for the first time in her life but actually, that's not speakingly true. She actually has seen another person die. She saw a Mabellian die in the pilot. But I wouldn't count that as a human being. I would count that more as an intellectual being from space. But I have to say that, that this episode experienced the first actual child death on, on screen. And in front of Bill, witnessing a death for the first time made her traumatically upset. I saw her reaction, it felt that she was almost going to cry in this episode and I could just see from her reaction that she's never seen anybody die before and she was really really mad at the Doctor so much and the Doctor had like a dry and blank reaction on his face and like what's wrong and basically Bill was getting so mad at the Doctor and then all of these amazing awesome questions came out of her mouth if you care so much tell me how many people you've seen die have you ever killed somebody? Those questions just blew me away on the reaction that the doctor gave out that he completely had a blank face and there was one scene in particular which I really liked and it made us really think that is the doctor a just man? Is he a right man? Because he always has a sense of caringness towards his companions like in Clara in series 9 but I think in this episode, we definitely saw the much darker side to the Doctor. And I really was hoping for that to be brought back in this episode. And I definitely got that. Because I definitely felt that when he said, well, I'm 2,000 years old. And I've never had the time for the luxury of outrage. I thought that was come really, really dark of him. I also had that kind of defined definition from the Doctor's point of view. On how he cares so much about everybody. But... He must move on. And from Bill's reaction, she completely experienced a death and she couldn't move on from that. She just saw a, a death for the first time in front of her and her reaction was just so traumatic. It really built on the chemistry between the Doctor and Bill in this episode. Definitely saw a lot of conflict within their chemistry. And I think when they had a kind of fight, I really saw that the Doctor was very dark when he said, well, I care, but I'll move on. But what happens if I don't move on? More people die. And it's just those kind of scenes where Peter Capaldi cares, but he moves on. I see that really dark of him because 
he would usually care for everybody. He cares about the entire human race. He's a Time Lord. He's 2,000 years old. Of course he has to care for everybody. He cares about all the life forms in the universe. But caring about one person is just one person. And even so, it's for one death. But he cares, but he has to move on. And he must stop those other people from dying underneath the ice because if the doctor doesn't move on then more people will die and the kind of reaction and the impact on him will get bigger and bigger and bigger for him to experience all of these losses that he's had of companions see how he feels heartbroken from ever when he um, saw Clara die in Face the Raven which that was Sarah Dollard's first ever story in Doctor Who and my gosh that was emotional for her to react in such a way that it's always very different for her to see a death for the first time, we definitely saw a point of view that in our lifetimes we will have that experience. Seeing somebody die, even if it's our parents, there will be like a time where we will experience death and it's just to the point that we would need to realise that we cannot just stop crying and mooring about moaning about this person's dead. We just have to care, we care but we move on. And that's how we get through that kind of stress. And that really built up some kind of a deep message in this episode. I really felt that their relationship and their clash arguments was a real dark scene in this episode. And where they kind of made friends in the end by, well, Bill was, was explaining to one urchin that uh, the doctor will fix this. And then you were fighting. Well, I cared, but I moved on. And then suddenly um, Bill turned around to the doctor and was like, hmm... And so like, yeah, haha, I knew I was right, Bill. And so they really complimented each other in that way. And I just loved Capaldi's Doctor, even in this episode, from his darker personality, from talking to Bill in that sense, like, I'm your teacher. Teaching things is what I do. And the re and that speech in where he was talking to Lord Sutcliffe was uh, unbelievable. I cannot say how much of a bigger speech that he could ever make towards Bill. For Bill to see the real, true, defined meaning of, of the Doctor in this episode, it had to be this speech. And I also do have the speech right here in this piece of paper. I'm just going to read it to you just to show how powerful Peter Capaldi say his words in such a brilliant dialogue written by Sarah Dollard. The correct words merged together. It feels that the Doctor always presents himself as a very lectural person who always gives out really powerful speeches that mean deeper meanings. And that's what I love about Peter Capaldi's Doctor. He's absolutely an amazing Doctor. And that's why I love him. This is why I love Peter Capaldi so much. These powerful speeches mean so much in the real world. And whenever I watch his Doctor, his darker Doctor really intrigues me. And the way that he's such of a grandfather character, he's so light-hearted, he cares about people, but he moves on in a much darker kind of sense. And I really like him that way. And we might as well read this quote that he made that speech in front of Bill and also Lord Sutcliffe. Human progress isn't measured by industry. It's measured by the value you place on a life. An unimportant life. A life without privilege. The boy who died on that river, that boy's value is your value. That what defies an age. That what defies a species. Even from the slow little gaps within that speech, just shows how powerful Peter Capaldi speaks those words to anybody. It can really make somebody tremble with nostalgic feel and whenever I see Peter Capaldi giving an amazing speech I always have that nostalgic feel that it's really interesting and then I saw Bill's reaction to that speech at the end just looking at Peter Capaldi and just smiling with so much love and compassion that Bill actually realizes that she actually knows who the doctor really is and I absolutely love Peter Capaldi in this. I think he's an absolute brilliant performer in this episode. Tremendous performance from Peter Capaldi. And I have to say that I also loved Bill in this episode. Although they had their fight, I really loved for what she had in this episode. It brought to the Doctor a much, much fun and very much entertaining part to the episode. I thought the first five minutes were really, really lighthearted and I felt it was really, really enjoying to see Bill's reaction to all the things, all the stores, the entertainment on the Frost Fair. It was just so amazing to see her having a great time. And you saw it in the corner of her eye. Basically, you see Peter Capaldi 
smiling along with Bill, having a great time with Bill. And this is actually the first time that I actually said that in my preview, I thought the Doctor was going to be very unhappy in this episode. But no, I was wrong. I was actually seeing Peter Capaldi having a brilliant time. And he was trying all these different types of foods and Bill was like, are you serious? You like, oh you gotta try this. <laughs> like, oh my gosh. To be honest with you, I think Peter Capaldi and Bill just work so amazing. And even when they're trying to gather information to from the like the factory kind of industry kind of place, I really like that because we always see Bill as and the doctor, when they work together so well, they really think about what's happening in the episode and they always have a theory on what could happen and how to solve the puzzle and how to solve the plotline. But actually, I overall thought the plotline was really, really good. I thought it was really strong at first. At the start, it was really, really strong. Even from the start where the boy fell through the ice and died. And I felt that was a really good start to the plot. It actually built up really, really strongly. Had some brilliant suspense moments. And I felt the tension was really building up to Lord Sutcliffe's palace. And whenever... I think this has to be another highlight of the story. When Lord Sutcliffe entered the room and said, Dr. Disco. Do the Doctor's still using that title, Dr. Disco. I mean, come on. I thought that was abolished in the Zygon invasion. But it's, all, it's brought back again. But... Hey, never mind. But I really love this scene because when Lord Sutcliffe goes into the room and sees Bill for the first time, he his honest reactions were to get up your... What's this creature doing here? On your feet, girl! And pay respects to your elders. And so that actually, that comment actually felt as a racial kind of racist offence towards Bill. Judging by the skin colour, I mean slavery w was still a thing back in the 1800s. They were in 1814, I know. I don't think slavery was a boss until... 1850, I think my history is correct. If I'm wrong, then oh well, never mind. But I do think that um, Lord Sutcliffe was a bit of a racist idiot, just being very disrespectful to Bill. And then I think everybody will certainly agree with me that did everybody says yes when Capaldi punched Lord Sutcliffe in the face. I thought that was an amazing shot because Peter Capaldi, when he punches somebody, he doesn't do it very often. He's very quite sentimental, but what triggers him off to punch somebody in the face? Putting a racist comment towards his companion that's very disrespectful and racist. Yeah, you definitely deserve a punch, Lord Sutcliffe, definitely. And by Peter Capaldi's standards, I thought that was a real highlight to his doctor. I really love that. I'm like, yes, you take that, you little selfish little idiot. The, the, the scene where just Capaldi just basically punches him and says, okay, he's human, he's definitely not alien at all. So he thought Lord Sutcliffe was an alien. I mean, honestly, I think to, to the point that I really loved the episode, I thought the alien part was actually really, really comedic. And like, I actually quite liked you when you were alien. I was like, what? I, it was just so funny to be honest. I think most of the humour in this episode really built up on the suspense and really made the whole episode an enjoying episode, but it made it light-hearted as well as dark as well, because there were certainly some dark scenes in this episode, especially when Bill was sp stepping onto the Frost Fair and you saw the shadows underneath the ice you, when you saw the creature just looking up. I felt that was a really intense, dark scene. Even from when Pika Pauli dived into the lake and saw the creature and Bill was just looking at, and looking at his eye, I felt that was a really nostalgic and quite dark scene. The location is just absolutely an amazing scene. I think they did so well on bringing the Regency England Frost Fair to life and it felt so realistic. The location just looks absolutely amazing. I can't really say that this must have been one of the best scenes or the best locations to produce a Doctor Who episode. Wow, that has to be one of the best scenes or the best locations for any Doctor Who story. Even from say back in the past, our Frost Fair, that hits the brief so well. And I also just love the costumes. The costumes are just absolutely amazing as well. Absolutely brilliant costumes. And I really loved Peter Capaldi's costume. He kind of felt as a very much 
Patrick Chong kind of style doctor with his black clothing and you got the funny trousers, then you got the top hats. I just felt that that was really much of a Patrick Chong kind of style costume. And then you saw Bill with all of the lovely layers on and then you saw the feathers. Well, I thought that was really fancy and it really represented herself as a normal person in the 1800s. And the costume just looked so amazing. So much detail went into the costume designing department and I felt it really paid off. The costumes look so amazing. I also just like all of the really great scenes and just the entertainment was really really great. I mean they had wrestling, they had Peter Capaldi trying to think, I think it was like a little um, scene where somebody somebody was um, doing a little trick to Bill and then suddenly the doctor was like looking at him like hey Oi, what are you doing? Do that again. I'm like, oh, you've got to pay first. All right, then I will. And so I'm like, don't want to pay. I just want to see how oh, you cheated. Cheated. It's not like, don't look at me like that. I just love that scene. It's like, of where Peter Capaldi was saying, don't look at me like that. I'm just saying you're a very, very good con man. And so that kind of represented me as, it reminded me of William Hartnell being very arrogant. Like, don't you look at me like that, boy. And so I really got that kind of sense that William Hartnell's essence was in Peter Capaldi. And I just liked that scene really. And just the way he cheated. But there were certainly some great moments in this episode. I really felt that the plot was really, really good. I thought it was a really good plot because it started off really, really well in the start, the beginning of creating what's underneath the Thames. And I really liked the creature. The creature looked amazing. Although we didn't see everything to do with the creature, we didn't actually find out what his species or what was purpose doing there. I think it was completely just stuck underneath the Thames, just wanted to be free. Because you saw it being locked up in chains and it was very restrained and couldn't move. But it had some other employing glowfish that kind of swarmed around other prey and melted the ice and then the people just fall, fell through to fell through the ice and then they were swallowed up by the creature and so I would probably say that those glowfishes really made me quite scared because although I definitely did see the preview clip from Thin Ice I saw a little bit and I knew that these glowfish were a definite threat to the episode because if somebody was alone the glowfish will go um, surround them in a little circle and then it'll melt the ice and they'll fall through into the ice I think the scene where Bill saw the child die for the first time, just seeing its hand holding the strong screwdriver in its hand, and it just looked so, so different, but it felt really, really intense. Because was, the, was Capaldi actually going to pull his arm out or bring the child back or just remove the strong screwdriver? In the end, he was just risking the life for his strong screwdriver, really, because you know the strong screwdriver, it's so valuable. And so... That really made Bill very, very angry in that sense. And that's what kicked off um, Capaldi and Bill's conflict within this episode. Again, the conflict is just absolutely amazing. I also like the little cheeky bugger that was trying to steal the Dr. Son screwdriver. When I actually saw that, oh, that's a little cheeky bugger. It's got a Dr. Son screwdriver. I'm like, oh, go on, Doctor, get him. Get him, punch him in the face. I mean, I wasn't even thinking I was going to say that, but... I didn't really want to think that I wanted to punch that child in the face, but just seeing a death on screen is more than enough than a punch, to be honest. And so I really liked how the doctor actually gave an exact definition of what's the sign screwdriver. I mean, it could be added to the English dictionary, to be honest. What's the sign screwdriver? I mean, how, how is that screwdriver in a broad sense? Okay, how is it sonic? It makes a noise. Fine, I use a sign screwdriver. Actually, I've got mine right here. This is a screwdriver and it makes a noise. So could I just say that if I just use a normal screwdriver and whenever I screw something into the wall, it makes a noise? Could I call a normal screwdriver a sonic screwdriver? I mean, we can't, we'll, come on, I think we've known the definition for what a sonic screwdriver is. It's a screwdriver that makes a noise, obviously. So I think we've now cleared up that definition on what's, what's a sonic screwdriver. So there we go. Anyway, I do think that the plot was really, really good. I felt that the ending to releasing the creature was actually a really, really lovely ending to it because I didn't really want the creature to be killed because what harm did it do? It only 
children and other people. It's in its nature. You can't really blame animals for killing other animals. It's in their nature. And so I just felt that the creature was just quite innocent. It was it was basically restrained in so many chains. I really felt I really felt so sorry for it because it felt lonely down there, being restrained in all of the chains, and it just really wanted to be free. And so I do like the ending of just releasing the creature back into the sea. And that really cleared up for me a sort of explanation of how the Thames never froze again. I just want to mention this to you now that I never got a real great explanation on what happened to the Thames after 1814. It never froze again. But I didn't really get that explanation in this episode. However, I did think that it made me think in my subconscious that the creature was the key to keep the entire ice intact on the River Thames because after the creature was finally released into the ocean or wherever it was heading to next, I definitely felt that this kind of tied up with the explanation to how 1814 was the year that the Thames never froze again. I think now since this creature kept the entire ice intact and so that really connected to the end to that little explanation there. I sort of got an explanation in my head but I didn't really get an in-depth kind of explanation which I was really hoping for but oh well at least I really did enjoy the entire episode. I thought it was really really well directed and really well written as well. So dollar with brilliant dialogue and really great sense of writing this entire episode. The plot was really good the, the humans actually using the creature by feeding the creature children or other people who fell through the ice and producing fuel from the, the, the creature's digestive system producing its you know you know, you know what I mean, it's poo. And then actually they use that poo to basically make a material out of it. It makes it better than coal. It burns a lot longer and it can burn underwater. So it's a much useful energy source that they can use for profit. So basically Lord Sutcliffe's character is actually just using children as bait to basically be eaten by the creature. And then suddenly the creature can basically produce all of its waste and use it as fuel and then therefore produce money in that sense because obviously poo and coal was very common back in those days and so I felt that that was a really good thing to use. It was quite of an ingenious, although it was very disgusting, but it kind of tied up to that it's the 1800s and there's always got to be some quite disgusting things back in those days and so I was quite forgiven that they had that introduced so I thought that was a really good plot and I have to say that the ending to Thin Ice was really really good even from when Nardo came into the story and bring in the cup of tea and then Nardo saw Bill and Capaldi in their kind of like clothes or should I say the Capaldi sense tea clothes really and then like I thought you were not going to go off world and I didn't mind Nardo in the end because it didn't really ruin anything from the Frost Fair episode. I kind of felt that Nardo actually was a really great addition to the episode because it actually made me think that it gave me some lightheartedness to Nardo that does Nardo actually have a position in Doctor Who? I mean his position now is actually looking after the vault and trying to stop the Doctor from going on off world. And I really like how Nardo has some position finally, because from the other two episodes, he hasn't been given much, much appreciation for obviously not having a position in Doctor Who, but now I kind of, I'm quite lighthearted to Nardo now, now, because since he's guarding the vault, it's definitely becoming more realistic and more likely that John Sims Master will be behind the vault and will be honestly in tied with the entire kind of series theme could you say like from Bad Wolf to like Torchwood and like Vote for Saxon I the vote kind of sums up the kind of series theme of the entire series and I definitely think it's Johnson's master because not only I heard four sets of three knocks but at the end I heard one set of four knocks and when I heard those four knocks I knew straight away it was the master. It was John Sims' master. And John Sims' master 
will be returning inside the vault. And so I have a really, really strong opinion that it's definitely John Tim's master. The four knocks definitely explain it. And so that's really my kind of suspicion of what's inside the vault. It's becoming more and more clear that it's definitely going to be John Tim's master for sure. And so I'm really, really looking forward to how John Sims is introduced and how he appears in Doctor Who. I'm just really looking forward to it. But also, I'm really intrigued to next week's episode, Knock Knock, Who's There? That little pun there. I'm going to hopefully go do some much better Doctor Who puns maybe for next week. But anyway, I really do like the Next Time trailer for Not Unlock. It seems like a very Hammer Horror kind of style. It felt, feels like a really gripping, a rip-roaring adventure being haunted inside a haunted house. And it feels so creepy and very dark. I think that would be really, really dark in my opinion. But will it be quite a horror kind of story? I'm really intrigued for Knock Knock. But overall, I think that Thin Ice was an absolutely tremendous episode. I thought it was so brilliant. The writing from Sarah Dollar, just absolutely perfection. I mean, the dialogue was just so, so beautiful between Pearl and also Peter Capaldi as well. I thought both of them, with their serious chemistry between each other, from from having their little arguments to like really saving the day in that sense. And I really liked how the Doctor gave Pearl the opportunity to save the day. Because I really liked how the Doctor mentioned to Bill that it's not my world. It's not my choice to make a decision on the future of your world. It's your decision. You give me an order. Tell me what's the plan. And I really liked that how the Doctor really gave Bill a sense of freedom. A sense of opportunity, a sense of authority that she could actually save the whole of the human race because it was her choice to do it and I really liked that, I really gave Bill some life in her because it, not only this episode was a great adventure for her but it was also an episode to give her some life experience because I definitely got that kind of sense that sometimes the choices you have are bad ones but you still have to choose and that still quote still goes ranting around in my mind that I really is so relevant today and no matter what choice he makes even from stepping on a butterfly you're just taking a flyer all of the choices you make in the past it's just it doesn't matter just pretend it's like the present day and just stop worrying about it even from that little scene there of the doctor mentioned that just stop worrying about it it's just time travel you're not stepping on the butterfly you're just taking a flyer and I just really love those interesting questions from Bill are there any side effects to time travel are there any physical symptoms are are there rules to time travel? But I really love those questions. And I felt Capaldi was really into her questions. I felt that he was absolutely brilliant in this episode. Really having the time of his life. But also showing off his much darker doctor in this episode. Caring but moving on as well. And having that speech when he was talking to Lord Sutcliffe. I thought that speech had so much in-depth meaning to real life. And it has a very more meaning to this day. And I really liked how this episode really tackled the issue with racism in modern society. And even so, in the beginning, Bill actually mentioned about um, slavery is still a thing. I mean, her skin colour is, you know, still relevant and she could actually be treated really badly. So, I really liked how they actually mentioned a bit of racism and how they tackled it within this episode. I really, really liked it. And I also liked how the Doctor always punches somebody in the face for being r racial offensive. And so I really do see that this episode could be quite controversial of history being a whitewash and then putting some, you know, offensive comments to, you know, Bill as she is a woman and she has a different colour skin to white people. And of course, the Doctor was really, really annoyed with Lord Sutcliffe and so the only thing was to do is to punch him in the face and so he, he well deserved that. Lord Sutcliffe well deserved it. But I think Lord Sutcliffe overall as a character was really, really good. I didn't think he was very underused at all. I really felt that he was a very intelligent and very regal kind of character who had some high upper class in his status but overall he had some kind of arrogance and quite stubbornness to people where they're quite a very different skin colour and his minions were quite stupid and quite idiotic at times and just some person didn't even know how to turn off a sound screwdriver. I mean come on I mean my sound screwdriver doesn't even have an off button. It just basically basically has a release button and just completely stops. But obviously, how did the Doctor even have an on switch to the sound screwdriver? Like, how? 
Anyway, never mind. But I just seriously have to say that my overall rating for this episode will have to be a 9.5 out of 10 because I would have to rate it certainly higher than the pilot. I think it's well better than the pilot. And obviously I have to rate it much higher than Smile because obviously I think Smile was definitely the weakest out of the three episodes that we've had so far. Thin Ice is my favourite, then the pilot and then Smile. I think everybody will certainly agree with me with that. But I'm really, really intrigued for Knock Knock. But I just have to say an overall conclusion to this episode that I thoroughly enjoyed this episode. I thought the direction from Bill Anderson was really, really fantastic. I mean, the shots, the location, the costumes look so amazing. And I thought Sarah Dollar's writing with the dialogue between Peter Capaldi and Pearl Mackey in this episode, with their brilliant chemistry together, I thought it was an absolutely brilliant episode. I didn't mind the child children actors in this episode. I thought they were quite likeable and it, they were almost like a hit and miss kind of, you know, children actors. I mean, they, they weren't really bad children actors like in The Forest of the Night. Obviously, people will be completely moaning about the terrible children acting in that episode. But in this episode, I quite liked the children in this episode because they were just orphans and they had to steal for money and for food. It was just like times and rules back in the day in 1800s where they had to steal for food and steal for money and work their socks off all the time. Time. And so I actually really liked the children. I loved how the doctor really told little bedtime stories to them. He, Peter Cavalli just seems as a very much grandfather kind of character. And I really see a much darker, sinister kind of personality with this doctor. Even from I care but I move on and I just see that as a very much dark side from the doctor that Bill's never seen the doctor being so dark and quite compassionate with his words and his meaning towards life he really really understands on how life work because he's a timely he's lived for 2000 years and for Bill to know that he does not have the time for the luxury of outrage just shows how tempted and how compassionate Capaldi really is as the Doctor and Bill really now notices who the Doctor really is in this episode and I really hope that their conflict really strengthen up within all of the episodes for series 10 but I felt that this episode was a truly phenomenal episode. I loved the plotline. I thought it was a really strong plotline, but had a really nice, lovely ending to it. I thought the characters were so amazing. Even the little coin trickster, I really liked him because I thought it was quite arrogant. And Lord Sutcliffe, obviously I hated him the most because he was much of a very idiot. And just, I really loved the entire episode. I thought it was just done so well. But I just have to say that I was a bit disappointed on how they could have done a bit a much better explanation on how 1814 was the year that the River Thames froze. And I felt that maybe the creature was very underused. I wish it could have been used a bit more often. But anyway, I really certainly enjoyed this episode. And 9.5 rating out of 10 is certainly a brilliant rating. And for Thin Ice, I have to say it's probably one of the most best episodes that we've had so far. Definitely, and I will certainly look forward to Knock Knock next week's episode. And so guys, that's my review on Thin Ice. I hope you have enjoyed it. Make sure you leave a like on this video, but also comment down below on your thoughts on Thin Ice, on what you thought about the episode, and make sure you do subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Well, I think that episode had everything. It had the Doctor using Doctor Disco again from the Zygon invasion. It had Bill almost saying the S word in front of Capaldi. No, and also the doctor punches a racist arsehole in the face and he definitely deserved it. Yeah, I think that really ties up this episode. A brilliant, fantastic episode. Thank you guys for watching for this review and I'll see you guys next time for my preview for Knock Knock. And I'll certainly have some more Knock Knock jokes for that then soon. Anyway, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys for that soon.